good evening and welcome everyone to this weekly mind connect i think uh, it's a great occasion that we meet so many people as they come in the evening call some of you may, may not be getting time in the morning but uh, certainly we uh, have this two opportunity today and tomorrow to meet you and um, we get uh, remain connected so wonderful wonderful to see everyone yes aswini ji good to see you after some time good evening very much yeah lovely 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 to see every message and greetings from your end yeah vinita ji good evening just waiting as others are joining in from the waiting room yeah i think almost all have come and others will get in yes himanshu ji very good evening welcome welcome for the first time i think you are in this evening uh, session yeah great lovely to see you everyone and uh, let's just start and as others join we'll start so uh, let me give a brief about this very evening uh, session it is called the weekly mind session mind connect session wherein we uh, join and share something which is very unique uh, or a specific issue like sometime we look at uh, let's say uh, anxiety management sometime we look at maybe um, stress management or how to be you know, how to manage anger or how to come out of repetitive thoughts repetitive depressive thoughts or emotions so these are the things we discuss after every um, on on every normally on friday so today i have a digression from the normal uh, thing we in fact i am starting a new series you can call it a series today we are talking about something called the quantum transformation and we will understand this and those of you who are regularly attending the morning sessions or going through the recording of the morning sessions they will be very easily relating to this why i take you through a particular pattern of flow of the mind what is it why is it been uh, shared i i was waiting for some time for you to actually um, immerse into that have a sense and feel of the morning session that we take you through why we get to a state before we go into the practice process and then we start and i'll give a uh, i'll i'll, I'll uncon uh, rather reconstruct it unfold it you will understand and probably will be relating and uh, looking at it why we have been doing so and i'm sure you will be definitely finding it very fascinating and this is something which is cutting is um, science in fact uh, in a way i would rather put it still science is trying to figure out these things and i'll also give a brief account of what are happening in this domain across the globe when they are looking at something sort of metaphysics but definitely something is happening beyond the scientific realm and uh, scientists thankfully now have come into this with an open mind many many uh, universities and uh, top scientists they have now started searching into the space of quantum realm in human experiences so we will we'll look at that uh, yeah dr rajiv is saying no audio is it going good for others all good yeah yeah uh, dr raji i think uh, need to need to just check audio all okay yeah audio okay o audio okay now okay okay great 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 thanks yeah so um we are going to understand that uh, thing of what is this quantum transformation and why are we doing this while practicing our miracle mornings miracle morning practices and uh, i will just let you know about that yeah great great himanshu ji so uh, let's get started with normally um, as we bring in a slide because that's what keep keep us on track otherwise maybe we'll keep uh, a lot of digression may happen so let me share my my slide just give me a quick thumbs up about uh, is it is it visible uh, it's not yeah just a moment where is it it's not there just just give me a moment so uh, i think i'll have to bring in the there is some issue which is in there yeah 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 it's not coming just a moment give me a moment i'll just share it let me stop share and share again
somewhere something has gone wrong probably yes just a moment yeah i think now it will come now it will come yes sometime i i get stuck in the take issues <laughs> yeah so let's share now let me share the screen and we are good to go now this time i believe you can see sorry Done. yeah yeah so <laughs> i keep struggling with all these tech issues at times so yeah thanks can you can you now see my screen and uh, yeah it's visible clearly visible thank you thanks so um very very mystical very kind of esoteric kind of picture that you can see on your screen so um the the topic as i say quantum transformation practices part 1 i'm going to take you through a series this uh, weekly uh, mind connect we'll go through a series because it's a deep subject not just that we understand the depth of it in in per se what we are going to do what are the specific things that we need to know so our practices becomes important they they become better our practices give us result by understanding few aspects so today we will be looking at the emotional challenges of life but more on uh, what i am going to discuss is the quantum transformation today being the first session so we will look at understand what is this quantum what is it that is taking us to a different realm altogether and why it is so important at this point in time so uh, that's what we are going to look at just give me a moment just give me a moment. yeah sorry i'm back uh so we are going to understand first what is this quantum and uh, what we need to understand what is it that if we try practicing from that center it is going to be far more effective in transforming ourselves that's what we are calling about talking about is quantum transformation but before i get on to the whole uh, subject i would like to narrate a interesting historical event it's one of the most fascinating events i love it Uh, because it is related to india and quantum mechanics quantum physics and we as indian would should feel very proud about this it was in 1920s early 20s when things completely became very weird in the domain of science especially that was the time when quantum mechanics quantum physics was coming to the reality coming to the realm of the scientific experiments and uh, that moment few of the scientists who are pioneers in in this field were neil wohr warner heisenberg dirac paul uh, dirac and many more in fact there are a series of scientists including uh, einstein who initially was completely thinking this is a very uh, spooky kind of science it doesn't have any base fundamental foundation but these guys were working uh, seriously on this particular subject one experiment was mysterious and let me tell you that same experiment is still mysterious today it is a unique kind of thing that happens in the realm of science which science doesn't have any specific answer to justify let me narrate what is that experiment it's called the double slit experiment those who those of you you who are into science or science student to understand this double slit experiment is a simple experiment where there are two holes and um, two holes on a wall on a on a laid wall and then electrons are are fired onto that wall and behind that wall is a screen yeah there is a screen on which those electrons which will pass through that two holes would fall on the screen this is the experiment very simple experiment so they started firing electrons onto that that wall and um, the natural the, the natural expectation was these electrons will fall on the screen behind the wall in two clusters because there are two holes so many electrons will come most of them will be uh, you know obstructed by the wall some of them would pass through the wall, uh, through those two slits and would fall on the screen so there would be two clusters what they found was little astonishing they found that these electrons are not in clusters they are in fringe pattern fringe means 
one black one white one black one height that kind of a streak that kind of a pattern which is found on the wall on the, on the screen this happens when light is thrown why because let's imagine water is flown through this kind of a wall what will happen one wave of water when it hits the wall there'll be two waves because there are two holes so two waves will be created on the other side of the wall and they will cut each other so when they reach the screen there'll be one point where there'll be more water there'll be one point where there'll be a little less water so the pattern will be created similarly they found that means electron is behaving as a wave that's what they thought so they they found electron is a particle why it is behaving as a wave they they the scientists are scientists so they they thought let's fire one electron they fired one electron then they found even the wave is coming that means the same electron is passing through both the holes both the slits and creating again wave pattern that was little mystical how can the electron pass through both so what they did next was completely amazing something unthinkable they started they thought let us put electron detector to find out which slit through which this electron passed the moment they put the electron detector something extraordinary happened when they put the electron detector and fired electrons they found the wave pattern vanished and electrons now formed cluster pattern they removed the detector they found the wave pattern now this was very very mystical because of one reason forget about the experiment the one reason which was absolutely unacceptable by the scientists was how the electron knows that we are watching or not watching look at the question the question came is the electron conscious how come it know the set of electrons they know that we are when we are watching them or we are not observing them the moment we start observing the electron behaves differently the moment we are not observing the electron start behaving uh, differently and believe me even today mathematically we can give some name to it but even today there is no clue this is a very mystical mysterious kind of an experiment even happening today and how the electron knows about our observation is not known and that's why they call it quantum consciousness that means there is a consciousness which is also affecting the physical world our observation has an impact on the physical world but the story doesn't end here the story goes further and it is brilliant from indian perspective because at that time two of the scientists neil wohr and warner heisenberg were thoroughly confused in fact they had sleepless night they could not as scientists believe that electron knows that we are watching it so um, while discussing for long hours neil wohr and heisenberg somebody suggested heisenberg these kind of abstract sciences abstract knowledge you would find only in india so why not you go there and have some discussion with some of the people who are learned and as the record goes in late 20s warner heisenberg came to india stayed in fact he met many people including he stayed for some time with rabindranath tagore that time he was a huge figure in india because of nobel prize and has lot of insight of indian philosophies especially the vedantic philosophies and other indian field of flow of philosophies and uh, later on in 1970s warner heisenberg is considered to be the almost like a father figure to the quantum mechanics there is a theory called the heisenberg's uncertainty theory for which he got nobel prize in 1930s early 30s or late 20s now he narrates in 1973 before his death in a in a book of fridge of capra in an interview he gone on record saying that my understanding about the quantum came from my discussion in india especially when i stayed in shantiniketan and many more people met and uh, i had discussions with rabindran tagore i could get a sense of what is this happening and that's what i still carry although the entire scientific community would not accept it but there is a reality of experimental understanding of quantum in the indian seers in the past they could understand they could access to the quantum quantum uh, realm in some form and uh, when he still tells this he says 
my theory of Heisenberg's uncertainty theory is actually having this, the observer, the observed and the observation are not different. That's precisely what we are going to look at. And with this understanding, how we can bring in a change in ourselves. That's what we are going to look at today. And when we talk about quantum, we are talking about two fundamental aspects. And that's what we are doing in every morning practice. You would now be able to relate if you are uh, attending the morning sessions or you are looking at the, uh, the um, recordings of those sessions which are conducting. The two aspects of quantum, the two magnificent aspects of quantum, the, um, the magnificent aspects of quantum are the quantum realm, two things we talk about. One is the energy and frequency. In fact, all the physical aspects that we see, it is actually of, uh, it's a form of energy. If you look at the uh, you know, scientific concept of energy and matter, they only change their state. So energy in some form becomes matter to our senses. So one is the energy that we talk about. So frequency of the energy that we carry, it impacts our external world and our internal world. That's precisely what we are doing. Today's session would be a little deeper in understanding. So my apologies, but those who are practicing it in our sessions, they would definitely appreciate as I take to the, go to the next slides. One aspect we talk about is the energy and the flow of energy that we are doing inside or getting inside when we want a transformation. That energy level, that energy channel, that energy flow is important. And we have to go to that state in order to make it a permanent shift in our internal processes. So that's what is important. And energy one, is one of the primary focal thing of the quantum. That's one. And the second one is even far more deeper. We call it the consciousness. Exactly what Warner Heisenberg realized, consciousness is a fundamental nature of life. Of late, as I said, now many places this is happening. Let me narrate about three places where it is happening in a very different way. One, they're looking at the pervasive nature of consciousness, which is happening in University of Virginia. University of Virginia, they have got a department called the Department of Perceptual Studies. It is beyond the materialistic study. That means it is not just objective study of matter. It, it, it goes to the extent saying, Consciousness and intelligence can stay beyond matter or in the other word, they say matter is part of consciousness. It's a very different realm which they're delving into. Now they're talking about the post humus existence. That means after death, what happens? 50 years they have studied a huge bulk of data. Huge repository of data has been created and they have now come up in public in 19, uh, sorry, 2017. Uh, they completed 50 years of data collection of what is happening beyond death. Their primary uh, realm of exploration is near-death experience, the um, out-of-body experience, and uh, beyond uh, what, what they call the past life experience. So these are the documentation they have done so far. And huge bulk of data has been generated on this. Science has so far no clue on this. The second place is what is known as the noetic science. In uh, Petaluma in uh, California, there is a huge center where they have been working on this field. They call There is a science beyond the realm of visibility and objectivity. So that's uh, there are also a lot of things happening. And many more places now, they are setting up understanding the nature of consciousness. And we will not get into that. We'll get into the process of consciousness, process of energy, where our ability to understand and to transform will be enhanced. That's precisely what we are looking at, looking at two aspects, the energy aspect and consciousness aspect. Unless we take it to a level of internal balance, internal state, our transformation will not happen immediately. There'll be a lot of resistance, whether it is emotional, financial, physical, physiological, psychological, any transformation, unless we bring these two elements to a state before we start even moving the transformation forward, the chances of getting it 
into a permanent change in ourselves will be very less. There are few scientists who are otherwise probably been uh, isolated by the scientific community, like Bruce Lipton. He has been extensively working on this. Joe Dispenza, extensively working on this field. And they are experimenting and experiencing these things. Yeah. So uh, many more scientists are in this domain now. Energy and consciousness, where we are looking at, and we are doing these practices. Let me take you to the next one. What we need to do to access the quantum field, quantum uh, realm, and the energy, which is again a part of the quantum itself. Now, first thing we need to do is to get uh, to get to the E state, or I call the alpha state. When we first remove the obstacles, remove those turbulence inside. Until unless we remove the turbulence of conscious and subconscious, we cannot get to what we, we may term it as superconscious. We cannot get in there. There'll be a lot of resistance and we will be feeling small. We'll be feeling limited. Quantum is expansive. The moment we first eliminate these things, get to the alpha state, this is the first step to go to the next process of getting into that supernatural state or super expansive state where we can start even working on it. What exactly is the process here? The process is we are going to the quantum realm using our mind. Mark my words, using our mind. Our mind is conscious and subconscious. The conscious mind can only get into that depth when the subconscious mind has got less dissonance. Dissonance means I start believing that I cannot change. That's the dissonance. That's an obstacle. I start believing I am having very poor memory. That's a belief which is creating a dissonance. I say I'm a very limited being. I'm very unfortunate in life. Dissonance. Or it is a resistance to the progress first. So for breaking those resistance, we have to connect with the subconscious, which is the E state. And all of you, you have started practicing, I believe, the A, B, C, D, E uh, practice which needs practice. Some of you would quickly get into the process of alpha, alpha frequency, but many of you will take time to reach that state. It depends. It doesn't matter. It is only how we are, uh, how our internal constituents are. Some of you who have already gone through the second week, completed the second week of habit building, I'm sure you have gone through all the questionnaires. People who would be having second day, in fact, the, it would be the ninth day, wherein there is a questionnaire called urgency index. If you are having high degree of urgency index, more than 40, it will be taking you some time to actually get into the alpha state because there your internal constituents are a little shaky. So we have to bring that down using some practices. I have given that hint at the morning session, go through the statement and find out what are those statements that you need to attend to and change. Similarly, when we go to the final day questionnaire, we have the five factor mindfulness questionnaire, you would find five different factors and some places you would be having scores which are low. There you have to work on so that your alpha state can be achieved quickly. So uh, that's the E state we need to look at. First, we need to get to the E state. The second one, realize the inner source. Those of you who are practicing in everyday morning sessions, I'm sure now you'd be able to relate why I take you through a particular process. I take you through how the breath is coming in, bringing energy, cleansing, purging, and removing the toxins, making your inner uh, part so light and calm. And then we talk about an inner source of divinity, a spark of divinity. Every day I, I almost hint at that. This is where we start connecting or start Still, we are with our mind. The mind is connecting, believing with the subconscious and conscious state. We are creating a connect with that inner source. And I always refer to, and it is again a miracle happening every moment in our body and mind. It's a miracle happening. Trillions of cells. Trillions of cells are organized and working in tandem so that we can breathe, we can eat, we can digest, we can do so many things. It's just a miracle that source is so expansive in its intelligence, so much energy it possesses, organized, harmonized energy, that all these things are happening. 
we are doing a wrong thing there sometimes we are obstructing so that the energy which is so so brilliant it is also have not getting the flow appropriately so we need just need to unblock those things those resistances so we are connecting with that source that's what we are doing in the second step the third step if you recall what we are doing third step is feel the nature of that energy i every day say what is the nature what is the quality of that energy it is compassion love it is flow it is forgiveness kindness lot of care this energy is a very uh, what we say it's a very blissful joyful state of energy it's a very different kind of energy and that energy we are slowly invoking inside ourselves this is third step you recall my processes you'll find this would be there definitely and finally we are talking about that expansive ocean of consciousness and you need not understand this much just follow the flow why i am giving it today because we have already done so many practices i thought now those of you are practicing when you know the purpose with which we are flowing with that practice is this you would find this steps we are following every day we start taking the body condition when we slowly get into the alpha state some of you go some of you may having uh, challenges but doesn't matter it over a period of time it is bound to happen only thing we have to commit we have to con be consistent and we have to go with the community constantly do it constantly go to the recording maybe multiple time you do it you will find slowly you will get the sense of that that energy that expansive intelligence and that's where when we constantly repeatedly go there we find something different what we find here slowly we get rid of the mind and the body that means we become somewhere or remain somewhere where we can influence the body and mind always we talk about the dissociation in a state we in a form we dissociate knowing that we can influence the body mind and the exteriority our influence goes beyond ourselves so that's the practice and it can change the frequency within it can change the frequency outside so all the time what i refer to three w's in our life wealth worth and well being wealth is money and other materialistic things worth is relationship and professional growth and well being is our physical and psychological being so all these will be improved provided first we work on this that's the reason every morning you will find this pattern is being followed and whether we are doing for um, starting with m in the miracle every although the process is in fact the the guide is different the guidance is different the uh, the visualization is different the suggestions are different but the flow is this the suggestions if you go to the quantum jump technique people many times say for me the hoponopono is not working because they they are not going to the state before they start it you need to get to the state before you start it. people say this is not working my eft is not working on me get to the state then start doing emotional freedom technique it would work get to the state do quantum jump technique it would work get to the state do hoponopono it would work so the secret is this is a secret this is i would say i would not keep it as a secret i'm sharing all with all of you but the problem is we are not going to the state before we practice so it it's it's like playing cricket on a beach ball will not it's not work it's not going to we have to go to the field before we that that quantum field before we start working so that's what we are doing every morning so people who are there in the morning do they resonate with this do they see this this pattern and why i have been doing it the pattern is same although every day the guide uh, the guided meditation is different depending on what we are doing whether it is relationship whether it is energy whether it is emotion whether it is contribution whether it is gratitude whether it is um, mindfulness or it is uh, the identity redesign do you see this do you see this pattern a quick response from people who are there yes 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 you are relating yeah absolutely so from from one day when we are doing i'm sure you would find much more benefit from this i waited for a right time when you would be able to relate yes so our whole process is this our whole process is yeah pranadha 
uh, yes dibiranjan ji vinita ji i can see animesh ji all regular practitioners kavita ji sukhdev panda ji nana ji yes all of you yeah great so uh, yeah so the whole process is uh, this and let's bring uh, look at it scientifically when we are saying first we are going to alpha state then we are taking our mind to feel that there is an extensive processes which are happening a breathing a heartbeat our flow of blood our digestion metabolism all these expansive processes are happening then we go to the nature of the energy connect with it we stay with it then we go to the flow of that expansive consciousness and again we we remain there and uh, finally from there we start like uh, in the morning today what was the practice we did we, we uh, today's practice was the thymus practice we we did the thymus practice for emotional channelization uh, and the three three deep uh, in fact the chest thymus and the throat so we we tried to unblock those blocks but the start is this the, we started with the process then we went there and all through we followed this practice to go to that quantum realm before we apply things on ourselves and on outside so this is what is the thing i thought i will share with you now emotional challenges people who are facing let's look at this after going to this after going to this state this state of um, the quantum access quantum realm quantum connect quantum field we start practicing and there although there is a part which is consciously engaged conscious mind is engaged but still we are we need to be in a state of flow we need to be completely in a state of conscious flow when we are suggesting uh, these things the practices are done one is the being in positive emotions that's already we are there when we are in the quantum realm and we repeat that saying i'm loving so many times you repeat you know the love and the compassion and the kindness forgiveness uh, bliss blissfulness joy all this emotions fast we are bringing in then the technique you can use that we have done all these techniques already most of these techniques eft is a powerful technique emotional freedom technique and uh, you can go there and see how we can tap those nine points and do the, the apply that technique to get rid of the emotional blockages especially emotional blockages uh, which are uh, stress which are anxiety which are things like uh, uh, worry sadness fear fear we can uh, release with eft a lot so eft but after coming to this so please do these four practices when you are applying eft or the thymus practice and the chest thymus and the uh, throat practice we did today uh, it's channelization practice or we are doing hoponopono that's also emotional practice with respect to the relationships so apply emotional channelization techniques all these techniques there are many more in fact every week we are coming up with a new technique so use those techniques after following these processes these are this is important now the third and the fourth point are the most important third point is anchoring to state and objects what is it anchoring to the state and the objects every time we go to the quantum uh, state we have to anchor it somewhere if you remember today we anchor it to either the breath or a sense of feeling in the body or to an object inside the body or sensations so anchoring means we are remembering that we are remembering that state we keep remembering for example uh, for remembering certain things we also we, we also have some kind of a index you no know? let's say for uh, very complex names there is a person his name is mihali sissens mihali if you have this he is is the writer author of the book flow 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 is a very powerful book i i would urge all of you to read wherein he has also given extensive documentation of indian ancient practices and he says that these are probably the best documented practices so uh, mihali sissens mihali i don't know how how i remembered this mihali i could remember sitsens mihali is a very unusual pronunciation if you look at the spelling it's very difficult to pronounce i could uh, i then started saying that 6 six, 6 six is the number cent cent is the uh, you know the american currency of uh, smaller currency and mihali so mihali sit six cents mihali so i used two words to anchor myself to remember that similarly 
anchoring of a state what we do we anchor when we are in that state we anchor ourselves to a memory let's say a flower let's say light let's say the breath so something we anchor towards today we we talked about a flower extensively how the flower is opening the petals are fluttering how this thymus is actually coming its full, full blossom and we are feeling the existence of this which otherwise actually shrinks and gives a, in fact as we age it shrinks but now we are saying it is opening i can see the feel that fluttering wonderful colorful flower so that's an anchor we created and that anchor is for the purpose of recalling that state immediately that's what is the important thing so when i say i am changing a emotional pattern in me for certain trigger i get very angry for certain trigger i get very anxious now i am the moment it comes i am bringing in that anchor and changing the state with the recall of the state with the anchor the flower in my chest the flower in my chest when it is fluttering and opening of what a wonderful feeling i was having that point in time i keep reminding it and that anchor the moment i remember i bring in and recall that so typically when we go for the thymus uh, practice that we did in the morning it is for releasing an- anxiety and uh, worry and stress so uh, we are anchoring over there we are bringing that flower and associated memories we are bringing in so that we can get rid of that anxious bouts palpitation or something which is going beyond our control so these practices are for that so we are actually doing a very scientific process of creating uh, or progressing so that we can really bring in some changes with our uh, practices and this is what i thought i'll share before we get into further discussion and have more clarity if you have any questions so that's the fourth thing that i thought i'll share with you and um, may i please stop sharing now and bring you on to the how was it was it little too overwhelming or could you relate and understand if you have any queries questions challenges in understanding these concepts uh, you can ask you can definitely put your question through and i will try to clear the, those doubts in you yeah uh thank you puja ji thank you so much let me let me also allow you any one of you who would like to share your question share your experiences especially those of you who have experience yeah vindu ji thank you who had got experience through these practices or could have some difficulty in these practices please do put forth your questions anyone who would like to uh, put your questions let me let me unmute but then uh, once you start just let me know so that i can meet others you can unmute and speak anyone who would like to uh, ask any question thank you dr gomes thank you so much uh, yeah are there any symptoms that we are connecting with quantum field uh, brilliant question how can we know that we are into the quantum field uh, this is a question by ashwini ji uh, so uh, that's very personal we call it a subjective experience and when i say subjective experience what is the experience there is a word in sanskrit it's called abhyapadesham you cannot express certain thing in words but having said that we have um we have one important aspect the aspect is when we go to that state of quantum we feel a state of immersion when we i say immersion of in a state of immersion where we do not actually feel much of thoughts much of emotions yet we are absolutely alert very alert and in a state of flow a flow would means you would not you would like that state a lot and you would feel like continuing over there and you would have a kind of calm composure within slowly as you intensify practice every day you would find it is becoming better and better as you progress through every day means even uh, best of players they have forms ups and downs so sometimes we will go up and down but on an average our growth will be more towards the state of calm composure blissfulness joyfulness as you continuously practice devoting some time to this and what the best part is 
even if there are challenges outside we can invoke that state wherein not just we are calm composed we also have better clarity of the problem better choices and uh, possibilities to handle that problem more and more we get into that state because we are observing things in far more higher degree of clarity so the only thing that uh, would give us a sense that we are getting into that state is a state of calm composure and a state where we are in absolute flow a flow would mean you are feeling like as if you would like to continue forever in that state actually i want to ask one thing sir yeah 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 ashwini yeah please go ahead yeah generally when i try for uh, meditation uh, mm -hmm. i get some muscle twitching some random muscle twitching mm -hmm. or there are goosebumps sudden certain uh, at certain point of time there are there are goosebumps mm -hmm. so is this uh, also an indication of uh, the journey towards getting connected with quantum field yeah to to an extent but the whole thing is uh, we have a lot of sensations in the body isn't it goosebumps is, uh, they, they are actually sensation in the body as you intensify practice you would find at times in fact this is a brilliant practice you have pain in the body and you can, you are so dissociated even the pain is not giving you much suffering so when you go to this this practice and intensify them further even the sensations are very comforting goosebump would be a sensation you would feel it so objectively but not driven by it there'll be pain in the body you will feel that pain but not driven and not suffering on account of it so that's the state of dissociation it's it comes over a period of time when you practice it more you will hit by let's say you press your uh, some finger or something quickly you can invoke that state and be in a state pain would be there but you would be in a state of handling it and less suffering would have so uh, that state is what we say that it's a state of complete Uh, more closer to the quantum realm or that state of uh, being in that expansive consciousness it's a little dissociative state so if you are having feeling of the body still you go a little further and you will have those feelings but you will not find those feelings part of you it's like an out of body experience to be, to put it in a different uh, way you would find that your body and mind are under you you are not part of your body and mind your body and mind are under you or you are under your space and uh, not you are captivated or limited by the body and mind this would come with progressive practice yeah hello sir yeah good evening yeah. dr reena here so yeah yeah reena ji please go ahead. yeah yeah when you connect with quantum physics we people like you no know, those who rely in science and all mm -hmm. always have that question okay is it scientific or is it there is a, when you connect all this you now we are getting more and more confidence okay you are connecting Thank all you. this yeah yeah that's that feel i am having that Great. always Thanks. think okay meditation what is it is it generally mm -hmm. it, can we justify on a scientific basis right. such questions always will come now but when you all this uh, quantum physics and our mind all these mm -hmm. things you nobody know, said now mm -hmm. so think okay oh, the, all, all this is, oh, there is something behind it some science is behind it right. uh, uh it's not not not, not a, just like a theory like yeah, so yeah. feel we are getting so it's good no so sir uh, this you. is Thank first time i'm he uh, hearing from you yeah. such such connectivity and all because yes. i missed Thank classes you. but still um, we are more and more confident yeah <laughs> thank you thank you <laughs> thank you rinay so yeah i hope all things are good at your end also so yeah great so the whole whole idea in fact um, yeah there is a uh, hand raised from satish i'll just come back to you Uh, yeah, in fact, let me tell you. Let me confess something about it. In fact, any practice that I do start I, or look at, uh, most of them are ancient practices. Many practices, including those those who are part of the science of happiness. And I always try to look at what is the scientific basis behind this. Is there some research happening? So I do a lot of reading of research paper as well, especially the research paper of uh, noetic science, research paper of many other. Now there are a lot of research paper, especially. the uva the university of virginia studies are happening a uh, lot of them are happening so uh, there i find these connects quantum mechanics few of the books if you if since you are scientifically minded some of you are you can read the books of uh, fridge of capra especially there is a book very old book it's not new one he it, uh, it's the tao of physics where he brings the eastern philosophy to quantum mechanics and the same author fridge of capra the story i narrated uncommon wisdom the uncommon wisdom book is on the uh, concept of 
uh, when Heisenberg came to India and uh, you know he had a lot of discussion with many people including Rabindranath Tagore. So uh, there I got that and I did some further research and came to know that even now the same mystery continues. We don't know how the electron is conscious. How does it know that things are like this? But using that, applying that, we can do a lot of good to ourselves. Thank you, thank you, Rinaji. So, uh, yeah, uh, let me uh, let me ask Satish ji his question. Yeah, Satish ji, please go ahead. Yes, sir, when I am in the office, I will do yeah. some work, whatever uh, I am assigned. Yeah, yeah. When I come to home yeah. or when I was in leave, mm -hmm. always I am thinking whether I was uh, done a right thing or wrong thing, or if something goes wrong. So, like that anxiety, I will have every time. Mm -hmm. So I will not be able to enjoy my holiday also, my work right, also. Right, right. So how to overcome that? Uh, so it's primarily anxiety which is troubling you. Uh, Satish ji, can we do one thing? Uh, today's questions are pertain pertaining to our uh, this session itself. What we do tomorrow, we will take up this question. Tomorrow we have a session for individual personal issues. I think I'll take up this question. If you can just put the question in the uh, link that I've shared in your group. So please put that question, okay. giving little more right. detail, little more detail would definitely help me give you a better solution. And we have this every week, but since tomorrow you are there, please do put it in a little more detail, exhaustive things that what is exactly happening when you say anxiety, what are the thoughts and emotions going through you in holidays? Good thing that you said the holidays. So put those questions with little background. I'll definitely uh, respond to it tomorrow. And we have an exclusive session every week for handling specific personal issues. Yeah, please, please do it. Yeah, any other questions anybody has? Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Any, anybody who would like to share some of, the, uh, some of the benefits or challenges in our practice sessions or the recordings if you are watching and finding any challenge? Because all the recordings till today have been uploaded in the system. You can go there and go back, watch all these recordings. What more I am doing now? I'm creating a separate uh, course, which will also be uh, extended to you. All of you will be getting that course, wherein I'll only take out that practice part, not the pre and post. So it's a th almost like half an hour, 40 minutes. So 10, 15 minutes meditations pertaining to each part. Let's say emotion channelization, all the meditation, all the practices of emotion channelization. Although there is a course of emotion channelization, now we'll put it as practice on emotion channelization so that if you just want to get rid of the emotions, just follow these channels, these, these uh, meditation without thinking anything, just follow them, consistently follow them. If you have anxiety, just follow the things like EFT or like uh, the today's practice, just follow them. If you have challenges with regard to confidence, go to the uh, identity design, just follow them. The sequentially there'll be 10, 15 meditation or guided uh, visualization and information. Just do that. So let's uh, let's do like that. It will take uh, me some time, maybe um, maybe about a week or so, just to you know edit everything and put it appropriately in the appropriate slots. We are still uh, we are already on that job, but uh, that would be helpful to all of us. So I thought we'll put it that way, so that let's not all, uh, put in a lot of hard work. Let us do it very smartly not to do many practices, but just be in that guided process. If you just want to go for emotion channelization, just go through that emotion channelization guided process. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Himansuji. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah. Any other questions that you have? Yeah. Uh, Kavita ji, I, I, yeah, it would definitely be helpful for, to anyone, everyone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, great, great, great. Yeah, uh, I can see this from this is coming from uh, Mohanji. Uh, thank you, Mohanji, that you have already put that to practice. That's so heartening to know that you have put miracle formula to practice and it has given you result in just two days. That's pretty heartening. In fact, please do continue and please do let us know how is it uh, improving your quality of life. That's a great thing that you have started. And that commitment will definitely help you. Yeah. Hello. Yeah, yeah, please. Yeah, Mohan, yeah, sir. yeah, yeah, please go ahead. Just, 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 would you give me a moment, Mohanji, so that I can put others mute and you can unmute yeah, yeah. yourself. Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, just let me unmute you. Uh, where is Mohanji? Yeah. Asked to unmute. Yeah, I have unmuted you. You can go ahead and speak. Yeah. 
Uh, yes, sir. Actually, mm-hmm. when uh, initial stage COVID uh, stage, actually, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, more phobia that time. Due to that reason, I got uh, anxiety and stress and all. Mm-hmm. But last one year, uh, I have followed med- meditation. When I have followed medication, that time it helpful. But again, it came. Right. But when mm-hmm. I have started your sessions through some of my friends, mm-hmm. I have started. Even I have started uh, meditation long back also. Mm-hmm. But when I have started your formulas. continuously mm-hmm. with confidence mm-hmm. mode wonderful wonderful i am really happy two days only and my anxiety levels are lot great, of decrease lovely to hear that lovely to hear that really thank you sir i will follow these techniques this please really do follow happy. please do follow and i'm i'm sure and praying for you that you will come out of these challenges certainly yeah it is uh, my emotional challenges and everything i'm decreasing yes yes i'm great. going with any positive way. thank you sir great great lovely to hear from you yeah man yeah. lovely yeah um, uh, mr Art, adam paul uh, i have unmuted you you can uh... yeah can can you can you speak uh, you can unmute yourself let me let me go there and uh yeah vinita ji has a question can we go to e state by any other methods there are so many methods so many methods by which we can go to e state and after some time you don't need any method also it will just happen naturally so um the methods we can certainly discuss all the discussions that has happened in the part meditation for accessing uh, or for sublime happiness that's the course that the first session first day class if you can go through that once again you can get to alpha state even in some cases not sitting down you can go to alpha state even while walking but you have to do it in a very different way as it has been guided over there so uh, or uh, we can i can also share every day when we are morning session we are doing just breathing in feeling positivity going in and uh, toxins moving out you do it 10 15 times you can get into the alpha state also yeah let me unmute uh, adam ji before uh, that actually more than anything it is uh, it is about our consistency sometime the alpha state uh, uh, let me also say so when the challenges are bigger outside we need more practice more harder practice and uh, yeah can you unmute i have i have asked to unmute uh, adam you can unmute yourself and speak yeah i thought you are asking something okay great anyone else who would like to put some question and um, we have i think 3 4 minutes to go so it's your choice if you want to put any question or anything related to today's discussion yeah i believe uh, i think it was yes yeah, satish ji also has, uh, he has already spoken i think so um i think if no further questions we have uh, thank you very much and uh, tomorrow we do not have a morning session but we have an evening session tomorrow and tomorrow's session is very specific problem oriented session please do share your problems in the link which has been provided in the group and uh, when you put it uh, you need not give your name and other details just need to give the problem and a uh, little elaborate uh, thing like when it started what is the exact thing what is happening if you are going through anxiety or sleeplessness uh, what is that it is happening or there is like palpitation or whatever it is or some recurring thought that is coming to you what is the kind of thought what is the emotion or some relationship issues or a professional challenge at some place or uh, having issues in uh, procrastination or goal setting you can put these questions and uh, give your details uh, or rather give the detail of the problem not about you we do not uh, need uh, those details just give the problem so we'll specifically answer those problems which may be of help to you so that's the idea for tomorrow yeah, uh, yeah just just a moment uh, balbinder ji has a question okay okay uh, when yeah balbinder ji it is it's, uh, it's going to come very soon in fact um, uh, maybe uh, 
by 15th of august it should come out there's little issue now it has been resolved uh, so we were thinking because it was becoming very expensive so we are we are in touch with them to keep it as low as possible so we'll we'll bring it out by 15th of august for sure thank you and you have been you have been working i i got your message today uh, on facebook I'm so happy to know uh, for those wonderful kind words from all of you and uh, the great thing is you are also progressing wonderfully well doing practice on a regular basis balvinder ji thank you very much yeah today's session we are yeah every session in fact we put it in the platform and uh, i think amol ji is not there in our group uh, amol ji i think is not part of the thing okay i i'll share it on the uh, group also on the on the uh, on this weeks group so this week's session we would put it there okay thank you amol ji for liking it so thank you very much look forward to see you again in the evening session at 7 pm tomorrow and uh, wish you a uh, good night and have a great time thank you